This book is The Argument Hangover. It is awesome, empowering couples to fight smarter and overcome communication pitfalls. Now, it's by Jocelyn and Aaron Freeman, The Freemans. It's funny because my, uh, everybody calls my husband and I The Honeys. We call them The Freemans. And they're friends of ours, we know them. Uh, and they wrote this book and I couldn't wait for it to come out because I know the great work that they do with couples. It's so powerful. So I'm gonna just read you a couple little quick things about the book, um, what the a argument hangover is. Um, it's all about, you know, if you're tired of conflict and drama, you know, they have a solution. And what's cool about this book is it's a workbook. It's a journey. It's not just a book. You're not just going to read it and then set it down. There's, you got to do a little work here. And it's great because the work is valid. Um, so uh, I'm just going to read the first part. What is the argument hangover? And uh, there's a quote in here. Peace is not the absence of conflict, but the ability to cope with it. That's Mahatma Gandhi. So this is what they say, you've had a hangover, right? Well, depending on your lifestyle, the two most common hangover types are the food hangover and the alcohol <laughs> hangover. We'd like to start off this book off with a funny story about the best example of a food hangover that we experienced. Don't worry, you didn't pick up a cookbook. We'll explain how this relates to your relationship soon. What time of year comes to mind when you think of a food hangover? It was, of course, Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, I've had those hangovers. Um, if you are also thinking, well, here comes a story about Aaron eating too much. Sorry, you're wrong. This is actually a story about Jocelyn. As soon as she saw the desserts come out on the table after the Thanksgiving meal. Now, this might not sound surprising to you at all. If you can imagine your own Thanksgiving, you may even know the experience all too well. When we gathered with Jocelyn's family on this particular Thanksgiving feast a few years ago, there was so much food. Imagine a huge open kitchen layout in the modern farmhouse style home, two ovens running on full blast for hours, and a 10-foot island that was just waiting to be filled with all the food going in and out of those two workout ovens, workhorse ovens. By the time the 12 of us were ready to eat, we looked at the spread in front of us as if we were waiting to feed the entire New England Patriots offensive line. Um, offensive line. The food seemed endless. Once we got through the main course of traditional turkey, potatoes, stuffing, cranberry sauce, and Brussels sprouts, oh, and if that last one surprised you, it was just as much of a surprise to Aaron to see Brussels on the Thanksgiving staple since he grew up in Ohio. We took a break to relax and gather ourselves for the next wave that was to come the desserts. This is the part that was so funny to watch and eventually led to Jocelyn experiencing a food hangover like never before. Jocelyn typically has a specific routine and healthy lifestyle when it comes to food. So from Erin's perspective, it was quite a wonderful joy to see her just let herself go to enjoy all the desserts. For our family, one of the key dessert items is pecan pie. Oh my God, I love pecan pie. So there were at least two pecan pies among pumpkin pies, pumpkin cupcakes, brownies, and ice cream. Jocelyn's eyes got so huge as the 10-foot island now displayed the scene of a home-style bakery. This was an opportunity for her to really indulge in all those treats and desserts that she doesn't usually get to enjoy. So she went off after three pumpkin uh, cupcakes, multiple pieces of pumpkin pie, and whipped cream swirled on top, and the main staple, grandma's famous pecan pie. Imagine the pecan pie just coming out of the oven, warm, gooey, while somehow crisp all at the same time. She was certainly enjoying herself and let us all know with the remarks she was making while eating. This at the time, of course, seemed like the best idea ever to her. Just a few hours later, she was in the first phases of the food hangover. At first, her stomach felt so full and stretched to its limits that it began to hurt. She felt jittery and even a little lightheaded. She soon asked Erin to drive home because her body and muscles were shaking. On the ride home, it was hard for her to process thoughts in her mind, let alone speak out loud in clear and coherent sentences. By the time we got home, it was difficult for her to sleep because her body was restless. In this case, the amount of sugar she consumed was a shock to her system. Needless to say, she didn't sleep well that night. The next morning, Jocelyn's energy was low, her body felt weak, and she didn't have enthusiasm to do much of anything besides lay on the couch, regretful of the actions she took the previous evening. Does any of this sound familiar to the hangovers that you've had? It does to me. What once seemed like a good idea, which in the moment did actually feel good, had now produced the totally opposite effect, leaving her wishing that she could even take some of it back. Don't tell us that you've never thought, I'm never doing that again. This is the example of a food hangover, but we bet you're already starting to understand how this relates to what we call the argument hangover. 
Whether it's food, alcohol, or an argument, the hangover is the result of something being overdone. Yes, it may have felt like the right thing to do in the moment, yet the next day you feel sorry and regretful for the actions you took. These leaves you feeling lethargic, tired, run down, or even sick. Now, what does this have to do with your relationship and your experience of an argument hangover? Well, this isn't exactly how you feel after you've had an emotionally heated argument with your partner. Or isn't it, sorry, well, isn't this exactly how you feel after you've had an emotionally heated argument with your partner? Oxford Languages defines an argument as an exchange of diverging or opposite views, typically a heated or angry one. The argument hangover is what comes after a dis disagreement with your partner that triggered high emotion. This surge of emotion can leave you feeling tired and run down because it took so much out of you, angry or resentful for what was said and done, tense in your neck and shoulders, uh, regretful for what you said and how you said it, unsure of how or when to reconnect, pain in your vocal cords if you got to the point of yelling, apathy and resignation if it's not addressed soon. So the argument hangover is a period of time between having an argument with your partner and fully resolving it emotionally to reconnect as a couple. So the length of you time you have, you experience these emotions can vary widely. The argument hangover can last anywhere from five minutes to three days or even more. For some couples we work with, they've had a subtle lingering argument hangover for two or three years that they just got used to tolerating, like a sore neck that became normal. Other couples might think, oh, we're good because we don't fight often or ever, but that could be a symptom of suppressing thoughts or feelings from each other and avoiding challenging subjects. If you're in that place, this book will greatly benefit you so you can bring up tough subjects without emotions getting escalated or feeling defeated. And it goes on. That's just the beginning of it. This book is so powerful. There's exercises in here to do. There's how to listen correctly. There's just some really great communication skills, whether you're in a committed relationship or not. You're in relationships, whether it's business or personal or whatever, any kind of communication and getting better at communicating in relationships is going to make your life better, I promise you.